So let's, uh, we've been talking, we've been obsessing over the Florida game against Alabama. Everyone has a different opinion. Uh, and I'm really curious uh, what your takeaway from that affair was. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Paul. I, my takeaway was it was a heck of a game. Um, if you are Alabama and you're Nick Saban, you're sitting there this week saying, we gave up 258 rushing yards to anyone? I mean, that that is a very, very rare thing. The last time they gave up more than that was uh, – to Ezekiel Elliott in Ohio State in that very memorable playoff loss. And so you go back and look at your defense, which I know they've had some injuries, but was still supposed to be the strong suit of this team and say, we got to get better against the run because there's some other teams that can run it in this league too. So uh, that's the concern there. And that's why, like, I've got Alabama number four in my poll because I, while it was a good win, in a tough environment against a better team than we thought, it still exposed a little bit of weakness in Alabama. Yeah, I, I know you have Georgia one. I saw that the other day. So, and not to to go loco here on on your picks. You're, you're reacting to what you see, but I, I think the Alabama fans who will be calling after you hang up will be pestering me for explanation and probably wanting your home address. So let me go, let you go ahead and, and settle that issue here. Um, is, that, is that a snapshot or is that a project? What is, what is that when you rank Alabama that low? Yeah, that's, that's today. I mean, I'm not projecting that Georgia will win the national championship. I'm not projecting anything like that. But as of today, you know, that's where I say that, that Georgia with the neutral field win against Clemson, uh, with pounding a decent UAB team and with dominating South Carolina has showed me a little bit more than Alabama and a little bit more than Penn State and a very little bit more than Oregon. Uh, I think those are my top four teams. The other thing for Alabama fans, first of all, my rankings don't matter. I have no say in things. Secondly, it's September. Third, be in the top four. It doesn't matter whether you're one, two, three, or four. So, you know, I mean, for, the, for those reasons – Rankings now don't don't mean a hill of beans, but I just I think that Georgia looks like a more complete team, although they they still have some issues with with their team. But I that that's my take right now. And and Pat, as you look ahead, uh, everyone knows Alabama's schedule after this weekend is 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 rather interesting with Ole Miss and A and M back to back. Um, how do you see this team? managing this run especially especially against Ole Miss yeah I mean it's tough uh, the, the, the SEC West looks even better than it usually does and it always looks good but you look at Ole Miss you look at Arkansas uh even Mississippi State with the way they handled uh NC State I mean there's there's just no real easy spots in that division but the the Mississippi game becomes much more intriguing uh, I still think I want to see Mississippi's defense uh, do it against Alabama's talent. But that the unit, no matter what, is better than it had been uh, uh, last year, obviously, much better. Uh, you know, the, the linebacker transfer from Maryland's made a big difference. Uh, they're schemed well, I think. You know, they're, they're just they're better. They're more physical on that side. But then the other side, I mean, they're elite. You know, the, the Matt, Matt Corral, and they can run the ball. And that's where, if you're Alabama, you say, hmm, geez, we just got trampled on the ground by Florida – we got to play a team with better balance uh, in Ole Miss, or, or, or are we going to be ready? Talking to Pat Forty of Sports Illustrated, who uh, who has certainly has a, a fascinating perspective on college football. Pat Dan Mullen getting a lot of credit, and I, I, don't, I know nobody wants to, he doesn't want to be praised for almost beating Nick Saban two times in a row. But uh, what is your takeaway of this Gator team, especially as we look ahead to that SEC East with Georgia sitting there in about five weeks? Yeah, Gators better than I uh, anticipated them being. You know, they, they showed me something for sure in that game, not just the ability to run the ball, but and that's even without having Anthony Richardson playing, uh, but just, you know, a toughness to them and a belief. And that, you know, that comes from Mullen. I, Mullen's a cocky guy. Uh, and I think he transmits to that his to his teams in a good way. You know that that they believe. Why shouldn't they win? They believe that at Mississippi State when there were decades of of reasons why they shouldn't have won, and they they did very well there. And I think he's carried that to Florida, where there's more reasons to think you should win. So I'm impressed by the job he's done. Uh, 
really since he got there, but this year especially, at least so far, I mean, they look like a, a very good, legitimate team that will give Georgia a run for its money in the cocktail party. Pat, I know you, you've been out uh, at a lot of games this year, including, and I want to ask you about a few of the schools that we don't talk about as much. One Cincinnati, who who has uh, one of the most intriguing two-game stretches, well, not two-game stretches, but uh, last week and, of course, uh, next week that, they, that they've had in terms of trying to get to the playoff. They're waiting for Notre Dame after Notre Dame's big celebrated matchup this week at, at Soldier Field. BYU, another school that many believe could crash the party. How would you assess these two as potential interlopers into the uh, the elite CFP uh, Final Four? Uh, I mean, I love Cincinnati and they're just their position right now. Uh, you hope for their sake that the win over Indiana holds up as a real quality win. To you know, go on the road, Big Ten, Indiana's biggest non-conference crowd since 1987. Indiana never has atmosphere, but they had atmosphere for this game. Uh, and they've got pretty good talent on that team. And they got Cincinnati down 14 to nothing, and then Cincinnati rallied the way you would expect a veteran-quality team to do and end up pulling away and winning by two touchdowns. I like everything about Cincinnati. I don't love their offensive line. I don't know whether how much explosiveness they have at the skill positions, but everything else about the team, quarterback, uh, and every position on defense, I think they're really, really good, and they're well-coached. And the schedule does give them a chance because you have that Big Ten road win, and now if you can go get Notre Dame and, as you alluded to, catch them at the right time on the schedule, if you can win there, boy, you're sitting in a pretty promising position going into AAC play. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.